Righto guys, so camera stuffed up nicely there. So we'll continue on from here. I've basically just roughly chopped off all of the, the creamy sapwood and now I'm gonna chase down to a single growth ring on the back of this stave here. To do that, I just use a draw knife and very, very, very carefully scrape in and try and find the growth rings. Rid of. So you can see here these shiny lines in the camera there. Those shiny lines are the late wood in those two growth rings. That's what I want to chase to. Is this so I've got this deepest one here, these are quite thin rings even for Osage. Um, quite quite thin rings, but I've got one rod on the edge here, and then I've got another one here, and then I've got another one here, and then I've got sapwood rings that I want to get rid of. Really trying to get into those rings that I want to get to. Actually, what I might do to make things even easier for me is start at the other end. Start at this end, knotty end, because then I can really see in the end grain which ring I want to chase down to. So first thing we'll be getting rid of these corner pieces here on this stave. Really want to get rid of sapwood. It's not necessary. sit for me. Don't think it's going to. I'll try that. You guys can just literally hang out there. I think Makeshift camera setups. So, no, not going to hold for me. Ooh. Properly down the chute there. Right, I got yours all stuck on there now. Oh, I'll work this end here. Um, and I want to work down to one of these growth rings on the end of the stay that I can see. There's a very big, deep ring right on the end, and I want to chase down to that particular ring. It's actually this ring that I'm into just in this area at the moment here. camera's picking that up. You can certainly see it. it. Might be a little bit more difficult to hear it, but when you hit the the early wood in this, so by early wood I mean early season of the newest growth ring, um, it's quite brittle, very chattery. It's easy to see it um, in this timber. really really easy to see it and it's very easy to feel it when you work the timber with the tools
So, got a big knot. What I'm going to do at the knot is just really let the growth ring that I'm in dictate where the tool goes. That's the perks of using bladed tools when you're working on woods like Osage because the uh, tools that you're picking to use will really tell you where to go. So, I've left the line here right in the middle so I've got one ring here and I've got the ring on top of it here so I want to get rid of this ring get rid of this ring on top you can, you can see and hear it very chattery when you take that timber off. Um, but that's what we want. To get down to a single growth ring on the back of the bow. The importance of having a single growth ring on the back of the bow is that it gives you a continuous length fibre that's going to be put under tension and the important having a, a continuous length fiber means there's nowhere that it can peel up and start a split. Oh, okay, so I'm into that nice big thick ring there now, and I'm just going to follow that ring uh, down the down the rest of the length of the bow. Once you have it started it's quite a basic process to follow that ring you just let the tool chatter away and work through the wood work up over the, up over the top of the knots I'm kind of back to this knot here at the moment. Just going to loosen this up. Jump out a little bit. And I can continue on. It's just a matter of working your way slowly along the length of the stave to reveal that growth ring that you want to use as the back of the bow.
Just looking because that ring really thins out uh, in one spot here. I just want to make sure that I'm definitely hitting it. Definitely hitting it on that far side of the stave. And it doesn't matter if you hit through one ring, you just work into the next one and uh, establish it as your back. This is the process. stave here. Some people like to get rid of that wood, this excess wood here. Some people like to get rid of that stuff. I tend to like to keep it. Um, it just helps you hook into that, hook back into that ring that you were working. If you leave a lot of that stuff there, and you can kind of peel up bigger sections sometimes use it to to really run along a ring uh, and that tends to work really well This stave is a bit strange. The um, the ring here is really, really paper thin, and then over here it's really quite thick. So it's actually a little bit more difficult to to follow that ring around on this side of the stave. But hopefully. Keep in one ring. Continue working along. Now, it looks like up here I may have actually hit into the next ring down when I was taking off that. Um, you can see here, it looks like I've hit into that next ring down when I was taking off some of that um, that other wood. So I may have to go down one other ring on the rest of this uh, to get rid of it to get it down to established one racking ring, but we'll see. I hope that's a bit of a help with how to chase a ring, what to look for, what to listen for at least. Um, if this video cuts out, which I suspect it probably will, I'll come back. Once I've completed chasing these rings out and I'll show you uh, what they look like completely established 